Hey guys, it's D-Money Bala. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how I became a software developer and the path that I took to learn how to code. So, um, we gotta go back a little bit in time. I was working at a startup mail order pharmacy. I had just graduated with a degree in Spanish. I thought I was gonna be a Spanish teacher, but it turned out that my job selling drugs to people um, paid better than I would get paid as a Spanish teacher, so I decided to stay working at that pharmacy. Uh, one day, the FBI came to raid the pharmacy, and I thought, oh man, one of my co-workers is in trouble. I mean, I thought somebody was like a Walter White Breaking Bad type character, but they uh, told everybody to put their hands up and walk away from their computers, and so we got raided by the FBI. A little bit after that, my boss got laid off, and I figured we were on a downhill trajectory and I needed to learn some marketable skills that are going to pay the bills. So I decided to learn how to do web development first. So my path from starting web development, starting to learn web development, to when I got my first paying web development job was about a year and three months. And I was not the most focused pupil. Uh, I spent a lot of time snowboarding. I met my wife, I dated her, and kind of got married during that time. So a lot of things that I could have done to focus better, I was also working 40 hours a week. Um, so I only dedicated a little bit of time here and there each week to learn web development. Um, I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and some Node. So the resources I used to learn web development, um, one really important one, the first one I started using was lynda.com. Um, through my public library, I realized that I have free access to lynda.com. I think nowadays it's called LinkedIn Learning. Um, the cool thing about that is once you've completed a course, you get a certificate that you can publish right on your LinkedIn website, your, your LinkedIn profile, so people can see that you've got, oh, you've done essential JavaScript training, so you have the basics of JavaScript. Um, so I did a bunch of Lynda courses and learned how to do a lot of web development through that platform. So check your local library, see if you've got uh, free access to that. If not, I think it's $10 a month or so. Um, then I also used a website called freecodecamp.org. Uh, Free Code Camp is a nonprofit that has a curriculum that one can work through and learn how to do things like CSS, uh, centering divs, and all that kind of important things that you need to make a website look good. Um, you can do things with HTML, it kind of walks you through HTML, then CSS, and then JavaScript. And then you start building projects and uh, your own little websites and your own portfolio. So it's important that you start building up a portfolio if you're trying to get hired. Um, another resource that I used was Khan Academy. And Khan Academy helped me um, do a few things. I kind of bounced all over. Uh, the, probably the most helpful I had was freecodecamp.org. Um, I went there, I was able to find a meetup that met every Tuesday night, and I was able to talk to people when I had issues building projects or concepts that I didn't understand. Going to those meetups were, were really helpful in also being able to network and understand what web development meant to do. So from January 2018 to August 2018, I was just learning on LinkedIn, uh, on lynda.com and freecodecamp.org and Khan Academy and then I was able to land an unpaid internship with a company doing web development. Uh, it was a Django based application. Django is a Python web framework so I was able to learn Python and I did some pair programming with a very experienced programmer. It helped me grow in my career and I think it helped me to land um, other positions that I did later and that really helped me understand what um, a developer needs to know like um, how to do a pull request, a lot about Git and version control that I didn't really pick up on by myself too much. Um, and then I also got exposed to Linux, which is something I use at my work all the time. Um, and the command line tools and learning how to do all that stuff. So that was definitely crucial to landing a job. So I was doing that on top of my 40 hour a week job. I would do about uh, 10 hours a week of that internship. So I wasn't doing a ton, but it also looks good on the resume that you were able to do something. And um, unpaid internships, yeah, they kind of suck, but I was really desperate to get my feet wet in the industry, and so I thought that was easily something I could do at 10 hours a week. 
it was something I was already devoting 10 hours a week to studying in my free time. So I was like, well, if I can do this, this will give me projects to work on. But like, uh, they had me create a browser extension. So I got to make a Google Chrome extension and something that would work on Firefox and something that would work on Edge. And that was a really fun project because that's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And that was something that I probably wouldn't have done had I not been doing the unpaid internship. Eventually, that company that I did work for uh, laid me off and they have since dissolved um, and now I then once I got laid off that was um, about a year after I started learning web development so that was the following February from the January that I started um, so it was like about a year and a month then I was on a, the job hunt for about two months did a lot of interviews uh, failed a lot and then from each interview I kind of learned a little bit like okay, so this is what they asked me and I didn't know how to answer it, so I'd Google that and study it and figure out how to do what they had asked me. And then uh, each interview I went doing better and better. And then I saw that the a university about 40 minutes away from me, south of me, was, um, was looking for a part-time web developer. So it was 28 hours a week and I applied. I went through like a month-long interview process, a couple, one interview, and then it took a long time to go through all the applicants. They hired me. So I was working there for about a month doing the 28 hours a week, but that still wasn't paying as much as I was making before. So I was looking for other jobs and other opportunities. Um, eventually I landed at a healthcare company that, um, so in May is when I got that job. And then in June I got a job doing Python uh, ETL development. So essentially I do, I move data from system to system um, using Python and a piece of software called uh, NiFi. It's a Java-based application, and I mostly just work with the Python and SQL and make sure things move around nicely and get transformed into uh, what they need to be transformed into to work it with the different systems that um, we do. Um, ultimately, I think it's just a numbers game. You got to throw your resume out a ton of places. Um, you got to kind of realize what you want to do and that might be really bad advice because uh, you, you're you learning so you don't really know what you want to do. You might not know what you want to do until you've been working in the field for like two or three years and you're like, okay, I've had my hands in all of these pies. I kind of realize what I want to focus on. You kind of look at what kind of jobs are available in your area and you see what has the most options for you. And I feel like if there's the most options for you, I figured that the there might be more competition, but if there's ultimately more jobs, somebody's going to get, th I'm going to get through the cracks somewhere and get hired by somebody. And that's kind of the whole idea that you have with software development. I just threw out a ton of resumes, did all the phone interviews, tried to get past the phone screenings, did code tests and went in on-site interviews and tried to do my best there and just learn from each interview. Um, building a network is really important. So see if you can find on meetup.com, there's a ton of tech meetups that are usually in my area. I try to find which ones I can go to and that helped me kind of build the network of people that knew that I was looking for a job. So they would message me on Slack and be like, hey, I found this job if you applied. And so that kind of helped me commit to getting a job as other people knew that I was looking for a job and they were being helpful. So try to find a community and they'll help you get into the industry. That's really helpful as well. For me, I really like this backend development. The Python's been fun to play with. I really like how much you can do with so little code. Um, it's really fun and pretty easy to read. You can figure out what other people have been doing. So yeah, that's my story of how I became a software developer. Hope you like it.